is Turner Syndrome and how would you describe it to people who have never heard of it? So uh, Turner Syndrome is a relatively uncommon uh, condition that occurs at birth. Uh, however, it is one of the most frequent uh, uh, causes of uh, certain congenital malformations at birth. Um, and so uh, all of us as humans have 46 chromosomes. We have two sets of 23 chromosomes, half from our mother, half from our father. Uh, most of those, 22 of those chromosomes are considered autosomal. And then one of those chromosomes, each from our father or our mother, are what we call sex chromosomes, and they determine our gender. And so uh, all females have two, have at least one X chromosome, and then all males are X and Y chromosome. And the vast majority of little girls are born with two X chromosomes. So they are considered 46XX, and that would be a normal female. And then 46XY would be a normal male. But there's a small percentage of little girls, maybe one in a thousand, uh, who don't develop, who don't get one of those X chromosomes in either all of their cells or a portion of their cells. And so they have an X chromosome, which means that they become a little girl, but they don't have two X chromosomes, which means that there are some things that can happen as they grow up uh, that would need to, that would create medical issues that need to be treated. So Turner syndrome is a, is a inherited condition where the little girls who have it are lacking one X chromosome in either one, in either all or some of the cells in their body. What are some health challenges that girls and women with Turner syndrome face? So uh, they certainly at birth, uh, if they have, uh, uh, if they're missing the X chromosome in all of their cells, uh, then they'll have certain features at birth uh, that are uh, suggestive. So uh, the, sometimes they'll have a slightly water, wider, uh, what we call a webbed neck, because in utero they have a lot of fluid that collects in this part of their, of their neck. Uh, and then at birth that neck sort of looks a little bit flared, kind of like this. Uh, they can also have kind of what we call a widened or shield chest, uh, and they can have other certain uh, issues related to uh, the head and neck region, and then sometimes they'll also have some uh, features in their extremities that would suggest that they're missing one of their X chromosomes. Uh, of course, if it's not picked up at birth, uh, then it'll be picked up in the first couple of years of life uh, because little girls with Turner syndrome will tend to have more frequent upper respiratory infections because of the, of the uh, malformations in the head and neck region. Uh, they can also develop uh, urinary tract infections because of uh, subtle uh, abnormalities in the genital urinary tract. Uh, and then they'll often come to uh, uh, medical attention, you know, sort of as they pass from their toddler years into their early school years because uh, the vast majority of little girls with Turner syndrome don't grow normally, so they'll present with short stature. Uh, if they are not picked up in childhood, uh, then the next time that they'll tend to come to medical attention is when they fail to go through puberty normally. It's little girls with growth hormone uh, don't have functioning ovaries and therefore they don't make normal amounts of estrogen and we would tend to see that. And then there's some uh, girls who have just a few of their cells are lacking uh, an X chromosome. Those are called mosaic Turner syndrome. Sometimes they'll present with infertility later in life. Uh, so those are the primary health issues. And then there are also metabolic issues that can develop um, uh, early in life that would need to be tended to as well. So sometimes they can have high blood pressure, uh, sometimes they can develop thyroid hormone deficiency, other hormonal deficiencies. And they can also have issues related to the heart structure of the heart. So sometimes they can have heart murmur, uh, sometimes they'll have subtle um, abnormalities in, uh, in the heart valve structure. So there are some cardiac issues related to uh, Turner syndrome as well. What would you tell a patient who has just been diagnosed with Turner syndrome and is scared and doesn't know what the future holds. Uh, well, you know, it's interesting. It kind of depends on the age of the child. So uh, most little girls who have this uh, have had it from birth. Yeah. And, uh, and so they're, they're, they're just kind of incorporated into their sort of self-image and their psyche. So 
uh, they, they're they not scared because they're just little children and this is the way that they were born. Yeah. Uh, but as they get older and they become more aware, very much like you did, Cassie, yeah. uh, they become more aware of the health issues that could be related to Turner Syndrome. Uh, and then that can be a little bit of anxiety producing. Uh, so the good news is that we've known about Turner Syndrome for a long time. We know most, if not all, of the things that can go wrong. And we can take measures if, they, if we get them into the medical system earlier and they're cared, cared for properly by specialists who have experience in treating Turner syndrome, uh, then uh, their risk of, of, of problems is dramatically diminished. So, you know, the earlier, for example, that we uh, detect uh, the respiratory infections and the ear infections, the earlier we can take measures to preserve hearing. Uh, if they're having recurrent urinary tract infections, the earlier we can take measures to protect uh, their kidney function. Uh, if we catch them early enough as they're growing, we can actually give growth hormone therapy to help them achieve a more normal height. Uh, and we can also begin hormonal replacement therapy to get to help them go through a normal puberty and go through the normal physical changes that accompany puberty. Uh, and we can also detect uh, issues with the heart because we check those periodically uh, by doing examinations and uh, what we call echocardiograms. And, uh, and then we can also screen for early metabolic issues and other hormonal issues like thyroid disease or high blood pressure uh, or what's called metabolic syndrome. Uh, so girls with uh, Turner syndrome have a higher risk of diabetes and related conditions and we can detect those early and treat those with diet and exercise and medication to either prevent uh, uh, or delay uh, the development of diabetes or to treat it at its earliest onset so that their, their health and prognosis uh, for normal longevity, so they can live a normal uh, number of years and have an excellent quality of life. Uh, they can pretty much do anything they want and live a completely normal adulthood. Uh, so the prognosis with treatment and uh, monitoring is, is excellent. What medical treatments do you think are most effective for girls and women with Turner syndrome? So as an endocrinologist, uh, you know, the earliest uh, we tend to intervene is when they do present with growth failure. Uh, and I believe, Cassidy, you were an example of that as well. So when I first met you, you were just a little bitty thing and you weren't growing very well. And so we were able to give a hormone called growth hormone or somatotropin. It's a simple and virtually painless injection that's given under the skin at bedtime. And we adjust the dose based upon growth rate and bone maturity. Uh, and we can add several inches uh, to uh, a young lady's height by instituting growth hormone therapy early. Uh, and of course, then the next thing is that puberty. And we tend to start puberty a little bit later in our Turner syndrome uh, because even though estrogen is great for developing normal uh, female characteristics, uh, it can uh, cause early closure of the growth plate. So we usually try to make sure that they've achieved their optimal height, and then we can in initiate estrogen therapy uh, to cause normal female uh, appearance and characteristics. Uh, and then, of course, we screen them for thyroid disease, and if they develop low thyroid, then we can treat them with that. And, of course, we have medicine to treat blood pressure and other the metabolic issues as well. So there are uh, very effective medical treatments for virtually every challenge uh, that a young lady uh, is apt to experience with Turner syndrome. Why is it important for women with TS to advocate for themselves and seek out the best medical care when it comes to health issues related to TS? Well, I think that's just an obvious um, um, uh, observation uh, for people who have rare medical conditions. So mm -hmm. even though physicians are, 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 are well trained across the broad range of, of uh, abnormalities and disease states, uh, the rare conditions, uh, they don't have a sort of um, a broader or deeper experience. And so most, a lot of primary care physicians, for example, pediatrics is uh, as well trained uh, uh, as they are and as much expertise as they have. Sometimes they'll, they'll, they'll attribute uh, poor growth to something besides, uh, you know, either a hormonal or developmental issue. So sometimes this gets missed. Uh, and so not all healthcare professionals are always completely up to date with the most recent 
uh, advances and treatment recommendations with respect to Turner syndrome. So having the condition and becoming your own expert mm -hmm. allows you to know what those standards of care are uh, so that you can make sure you request, for example, uh, an, an annual exam and blood pressure check and, and testing of the thyroid and chest, testing of glucose and cholesterol and uh, making sure that they listen to the heart and that every five years or so uh, an echocardiogram is ordered and then at least once a year the urinalysis is checked to make sure there's no evidence of infection. So these are just basic things that a patient with Turner syndrome should know that they need uh, and not always expect the health care providers to provide those because they may not know. And so when you know what the standards are, when you're in to see your health care professional, you can request, oh, can you please make sure my blood pressure is checked? Can you please check uh, my thyroid? And you know, it's been about five years since I had a, an echo on my heart, so can we go ahead and get that ordered? So you can make the request from the system to provide what it, what it wants and needs to give you anyways. And so being your own advocate is, uh, is uh, a first and foremost recommendation. And I'm glad that you guys are, are doing that. And I'm glad that you're getting the word out to your other uh, friends and peers who have Turner Syndrome. What is classic Turner Syndrome? And what is mosaic Turner Syndrome? What are the differences? Yeah, so it has to do with when the, uh, the X chromosome is left out. Okay, mm -hmm. so when the egg and the sperm come together and cause, to fer cause a fertilized ovum, if that initial cell uh, lacks an X chromosome, then every cell that develops uh, as that reproduces, as that uh, multiplies and divides, um, or divides and multiplies, uh, will lack an X chromosome. And that means every single cell in the body uh, would be what we call XO or X minus X. And uh, so that would, that would cause a more severe um, uh, abnormality. It would, it would generally result in an earlier onset. Uh, it would generally re result in uh, more of the uh, malformations that we talked about. And so the classic Turner syndrome will have uh, for sure, you know, some, some anomalies at birth, short stature in childhood, uh, absent puberty, um, and then the adult issues that can develop as well. Now, if, uh, if, the, if that uh, ovum begins to multiply, divide and multiply, and so now you have several cells together, uh, as it goes from being a single fertilized ovum to a fetus, uh, then sometimes only a small portion of the total cells will lack an X chromosome. So if I examine uh, 10 cells uh, maybe seven of those cells would be XX, but three of those cells would be XO. So only a small a portion, kind of like a mosaic picture. Uh, you're putting things together like a puzzle. So only some of the pieces will lack the X chromosome. And then you'll have variable uh, presentation. Some of these little girls will look completely normal at birth. Sometimes they can even grow normally for a while. Uh, sometimes they can go through partial puberty. Uh, and if there's only a few cells absent, sometimes they'll, they'll look normal, they'll grow normally, they'll go through puberty normally, but they won't be able to have children. And so sometimes they're not seen until later in life. Uh, or if they develop some of the other anomalies like heart valve problems and things like that. So uh, the classic Turner's, all the cells are affected. In mosaic, only some of the cells are affected. In classic, it's more severe. In mo mosaic, not quite so. Why is raising awareness for Turner syndrome so important to you? Well, there probably would be, you know, three or four reasons that I could think of initially. You know, the first is to make sure that the healthcare professionals uh, that uh, are responsible for detecting and treat treating Turner syndrome uh, would know about this so that they would know to look for it. So I think awareness amongst the healthcare community is critical because the earlier the diagnosis and the earlier the treatment, uh, the better the overall outcome. So awareness amongst the healthcare community is critical. Uh, awareness in the Turner Syndrome community, so the patients who have it uh, and their families, it's obviously important uh, so that they can seek attention early and they can understand how the treatments uh, help them uh, and they can know to ask the right questions and make sure that they see their healthcare professional 
uh, regularly and that the, the right things get done for the right reasons at the right time. Okay, so awareness amongst patients who have it uh, obviously is critical. Uh, and, and also it's, it's helpful uh, so that they can um, develop sort of the proper uh, and healthy idea about themselves, okay? So, in other words, uh, you are, um, Turner syndrome doesn't characterize or define you. Uh, that you're uh, a legitimate and blessed uh, and gifted uh, uh, human being who happens to lack an X chromosome. And so it helps you to understand uh, that you're not defined by the condition, that you're just a, a, a unique individual who has a condition uh, that just changes your experience of life but doesn't define your experience of life. Uh, one, one thing about just the way that, that Turner girls uh, develop, you know, they develop normal intelligence, uh, completely do well in school. Uh, they tend to have extremely good language and literary skills they tend to be a little bit more challenged uh, in terms of visual spatial skills uh, and uh, like many people with sort of math and, and those type of kinds of conceptual issues. So knowing about that early allows them to get the proper tutoring that they need and the proper special education that they need uh, so that they can do well in all aspects of their academic life. So again, having an uh, awareness allows you to know what needs to be done, when it needs to be done, how it needs to be done. And then, of course, for the general community to understand uh, and, and not to um, uh, marginalize, but to understand uh, the, 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 that these people, like all people, right, should be uh, uh, accepted into the, into the wider community uh, as the gift that they are and the contribution that they can make. So, you know, we, we do live in a time where there's this sort of widespread fear and suspicion of the other. So if something is different, uh, uh, then it tends to be suspect. Uh, and so understanding that, that, uh, that these people are, are, are different only in that they're missing one little chromosome, uh, but that they're completely human uh, and completely uh, healthy and, and, and complete, complete co and equal contributors, right, yeah. to our life together. Uh, so having that sort of wider awareness is good for the whole community at large. Uh, and, and I do appreciate that question because I think that's maybe the one, one of the more important ones and certainly the one that kind of prompted this interview. So thanks for asking. That's great. Awesome. Well, thank you, Dr. Shepard, for doing this. And so thank you so much. It's my pleasure, Cassidy. You take care.